Welcome to the Oddity Shop, where the bizarre is always on sale. Welcome back, you oddballs. This is the Oddity Shop. I'm Kara, and this is the most wonderful Zach ever. The best Zach who's ever existed. <laughs> you couldn't just accept wonderful. Oh, I'm sorry. The most wonderful. Thank you, is what I meant to say. <sighs> God. How are you? I'm doing good. Doing good. I could really use a little bit of caffeine, I feel like. But other mm. than that, I'm pushing through it. How about you? I'm good. Uh, I want to go see Barbie. Oh my god, I want to see it so bad. It just seems so campy. When can we go together? We can't. Damn. No, we're not going to be able to. We should go at the same time, different theaters, and we can just... I'm probably just going to go by myself, to be completely honest. Yeah, I can't see you dragging air into that one. Yeah, no, I think I would just go by myself. I'm super excited for it, though. might admire Ryan Gosling in peace. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I don't know what it is about his hair, though. And I mean, it, he's looking like Ken. But to me, I just see... And his n- first name is escaping me. But do you remember Mad TV? I don't know if I ever really watched it. Oh, my gosh. There was, I think his last name is McDonald. He was, oh, he was the one who like played Stuart and stuff, though. But like Ryan Gosling now with his hair like that looks so much like the guy from Mad TV is all I can think about. Oh, I know who you're talking about. OK, first off, no, but I do get where you're coming from. Like not in the Stuart character, but like him usual. Okay. He would play like a dad a lot and have the same hairdo and it just like Ryan Gosling looks like a younger <laughs> version of him. It's all I can oh see. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, so I just have to tell you this because it's just so funny to me and I can't stop saying it, but nobody else understands it. Okay, I work with this girl. I'm not going to name names because like, I don't know people, whatever. So I work with this girl and she's telling me this story. I don't even know how we started talking about this, but this is she's this happened to her a while ago, but she's out at like this bar and there's this guy sitting next to her. And I'm not making fun of anybody, but clearly he was going through something, like he was just not having a good time. Okay. Maybe okay. there was something else going on mentally, but so I'm not laughing at that, but her and I can't stop saying this together. So she's like sitting next to him. He's not talking to her. He's on a bar napkin drawing a skateboard. And he says out loud, but like to himself, stop thinking about skateboards. Think about girls. (laughs) (laughs) And it's so sad. But now all day long at work, me and I'm like, oh, I just gave her name away. (laughs) We're like, (laughs) we're like, I'm like, God, could you just stop thinking about skateboards and think about girls? And she's a lesbian. So it's actually funnier because I'm like, she does think about girls. That is amazing. But isn't that like, I'm like, oh, I'm like, I kind of, I'm like, why didn't you be his friend? And she's like. No. <laughs> <laughs> he needed a wingman. Something about skateboards. <laughs> Stop thinking about so... skateboards. That sounds like like an SNL skit to me. I don't know. Oh that. god. That's kind of what made me think of it when you were talking about Mad TV and I looked up that guy. Okay. <laughs> Great. Um cool. What else is going on in your nothing. life? I got nothing going on right now. All right. Well, do you have a question for me? I do have a question for you. Are you ready for a question? Is question number one. <laughs> Yes. Okay. Give it to me. Would you go to a haunted place by yourself overnight for one million dollars? <sighs> it's a million dollars for like eight hours. Um, am I am I being recorded? Am I like No, you're just absolutely alone. <sighs> How haunted is haunted? Haunted. Like, like demonic. No if ands or buts. Are you going? Not with me, but no. are you doing it separately? Oh, yeah. so for a million dollars? Absolutely. Okay. Mm, I, I guess maybe. Maybe is such a cop-out answer. but I'm... Is it a Sam and Colby challenge? Yes. Um, <laughs> no, but we are going to be talking about a place today that Sam and Colby did go to, and I figured Ooh. you'd be excited about that. Well, you know, I am. Are you ready to just get on into it? Yes, let's go. Perfect. All right. So we're going to start with a little bit of a history lesson in Texas. Okay. So not too far from Dallas, Texas is a popular haunted location that's said to be one of the most haunted places in America. So we're going to what's now called Lantana, Texas, but I'm going to be telling you the story of the old Alton Bridge. 
hasn't clicked yet, I can see it in your face, but you're going to know. I am going to know. I'm trying. It sounds familiar, but I can't. I watch so much Sam and Colby, so I'm trying to remember what episode it would be. <laughs> We're going back to 1846, and okay. government officials had just formed Denton County in Texas. Okay. And they're looking for the place, they call it the seat of the county or the county seat. Basically, what's going to be like their quote unquote capital area of the county. They first picked a remote area and named it Pinckneyville, which was after a governor or something. Pinkney? Yeah. Okay. You know, I just like, want to make sure you said that. Uh, that's what I heard. Yeah. Pinckneyville. His Pinkney. last The guy's last name is Pinkney. Um, they abandoned this location as the seat of the county after just two years because apparently building the center of your county in a remote area with no access to water is a bad idea. That sounds dumb. Yeah. Um, if you can't get drinking water, people don't apparently want to come to your city. So in 1848, a new seat was decided on, and this area was high on a ridge between Pecan Creek and the Hickory Creek, about a mile away from Pinckneyville, where the village okay. of Alton was formed. Now, at this time, Alton only had one single resident who owned a farmstead. He quickly got annoyed because very fast, a post office opened up along with hotel, a couple stores, several homes, a blacksmith, a school, a saloon, and eventually doctors and lawyers all started making their way to this new village of Alton. Uh, however, just as quickly as the village of Alton grew, it declined just as quickly. Because these people get bored with their county seats, in 1856, the settlers of Alton decided to move to Denton, Texas. Okay. Uh, so most of the inhabitants of Alton set out for Denton. Better location, more resources, and according to the internet, literally, the inhabitants just got bored. Okay. So, <laughs> however, before Alton was completely abandoned, the old Alton Cemetery was created, and many of the original settlers of Alton are buried there. So, um, anyone who basically didn't leave what where Alton became a ghost town ends up buried in the old Alton Cemetery. All right. Okay, this is sounding familiar. By 1859, like I said, most of the uh, inhabitants are gone. Those who stayed behind were older. Uh, they started, you know, making their way to the cemetery one by one. The post office closes its doors and Alton is just completely dead. What year is this again? That was 1859. Okay. Okay. So let's fast forward a little bit. 1884, as Denton continued to grow, um, the city hires the King Iron Bridge Manufacturing Company to build a bridge to cross the Hickory Creek to connect the city of Denton to Copper Canyon. Now, this bridge is built just south of where the city of Alton was. Mm -hmm. And right between the two is the graveyard. So the bridge is aptly named the Old Alton Bridge, trying to give a little bit of namesake to their old seat of power, which they completely abandoned. Now, uh, the bridge itself is made out of iron. It's 145 feet long, and it served the area for well over 100 years. First built to carry horses, then it was updated to carry vehicles, uh, which was allowed through 2001. However, in 2001, the bridge was rebuilt, this time out of concrete and steel, and became closed to vehicle traffic. So now you can only cross it on foot. Cool. Okay. You just got a great history lesson of an old bridge. That's my episode. How did you like it? <laughs> Good job. Let's go to the beach. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, we're going to get into why this is the creepiest fucking bridge on the planet. Okay. So over the years, it's had many nicknames. We've had the Alton Bridge. Is this bridge. Goatman's Bridge? We've had Argyle Bridge. <laughs> okay. And now the locals call it the Goatman Bridge. Okay. I know a lot about this bridge. Oh, yeah. I was going to say, this probably rings a bell for you and many of our listeners. It's been explored by Sam Colby, BuzzFeed Unsolved, and our favorite investigators, the Ghost Adventure Team. <laughs> um, <laughs> Twin Paranormal went, too. Oh, did, I haven't watched that episode, so I should. Probably should have before I did this, but hey. Mm -hmm. um, let's go now into the lore of the bridge before we get into what happens at the bridge. All right. Half a century after the bridge was constructed, there lived a man by the name of Oscar Washburn. 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 Uh, Oscar and his family, they settled near the bridge, built a little house not too far away from where the town of Alton and its cemetery was. Oscar was an African-American man. 
and he earned an honest living by raising goats. Oscar was also a very savvy businessman, and his goat business was a complete success. Just sounds like the dream. Right? Living by an old bridge, raising goats, just seems peaceful, except poor Oscar doesn't have the most peaceful life. We'll get there. Um, so, but within a few years of setting up his shop, he earned a reputation for being very trustworthy, a valuable member of society. He was raising and selling these goats, their milk, and I imagine the cheese as well, because that shit is just delicious. <laughs> I don't know in this, like, early 1900s, like 1930s, if we had it's goat the, cheese. probably not the same vibe if it was. Right, but, like, I just, he was selling goat cheese, I know it. Um, so the locals came to know him, though, as the Goat Man. And in an effort to gain more business, he hung up a sign on the old Alton Bridge that said, This way to the Goat Man with an arrow pointing to his home. I mean, that sounds creepy, but I know it wasn't meant to be creepy, but that kind of sounds creepy. It, it does have some creepy vibes to it, but at this time, it's, you know, pretty wholesome. So like I said, the locals were really, you know, they liked this guy. They thought he was a good businessman and trustworthy, but there were some locals who were not very fond of Oscar, <sighs> a.k.a. the Goat Man. I wonder why. Right? It has nothing to do with race in 1938. Oh, wait, it does. Some white people couldn't cope with having a successful black businessman in their neighborhood. And when Oscar hung the sign on the bridge, they became enraged. So August 1938, a group of Klansmen, who are also part of the local government, great job, Texas, uh, they approached the bridge in their car. They turned off their headlights and drove slowly across and up near Oscar's home. Once near, they jumped out of the car entered the home and literally kidnapped Oscar from his family, mm -hmm. just tore him from the house. You know what this has always reminded me of? And it makes me so sad. I mean, this is real, but this in this movie makes me so sad. In Holes, before she turned to kissing Kate Barlow, remember she was in love with Sam and he always gave her onions. He was the onion farmer. I haven't watched that movie since it was in theaters. It's like the whole premise of the movie. He was an African-American man and the town was so mad that she fell in love with him. So they killed him. Oh. And that's how she became kissing Kate Barlow and she just murdered everybody. Well, you know, <laughs> if they murder the love of your life, I think that kind of gives you the okay. Right. Okay. Okay. It's so It's so sad. It's so, 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 so sad. <laughs> yes. Thank you for the lightness in the middle of this because it's only going to get more sad. I know. So with Oscar in tow, though, the Klansmen, they drive back to the bridge. They slip a noose around the goat man's neck. And after securing the other end of the rope to the bridge, they threw him over the side. <sighs> However, things take a really strange twist here. Because as these assholes look over the bridge to see their victim, they find no goat man at the end of the rope. It was as if he had just disappeared. They searched the surrounding wood for him but it was no use. The goat man alive was never seen again. I think his goats probably came and they were like, okay, stand on me so that you don't, <laughs> you know, like they were like, you know, stand on my little back. And then he was able to just like get out and then just ride away on a goat. I think that's a little bit wishful thinking, but you know, <laughs> I, I like where you're going. <laughs> um, that's how I like to imagine it. Okay. Good for more lightness, because we're going dark again. Further <laughs> angered by this, the KKK members drive back to Oscar's home and in a fit of rage are said to have slaughtered his wife and children. Yeah. Um, most seem to agree that they did so by lighting the house on fire with the family inside yep. in order to bait Oscar back to the home in a desperate <sighs> rescue attempt. It's so, so, so... Just unsettling hor horrific because here's the and thing. literally just because a black man had a successful business in the right. early 1900s right we don't have to whatever but it, it's it's even more wild to me that it's like okay so you're trying to kill this man which is wrong in so many ways right just because you're like well where did he go you know what i think it's a really smart idea to go and attack his family and just literally try to bait this man to come save his family that's so fucked up beyond fucked up now a lot of people so that there's arguments on whether this actually happened or not right so there's not a whole lot to prove that this story is absolutely 100 percent true oh i wonder why right 
uh, I wonder if some people want to cover it up or mm-hmm. you know, and make it seem like a legend. A lot of our history. Right? Just whitewashing the whole thing. So we'll never know if this story actually happened or not, but whether it did, strange things had begun to occur on the bridge and the surrounding woods. So, according to locals, if you walk across the bridge and knock three times, or if you're too scared to get out of your car, you can pull up to the bridge, turn out your lights, and honk three times. Either way that you choose to do it, you may manifest a sighting of the goat man himself. Those who have seen him describe him as a vengeful spirit. Some only see his red glowing eyes peering out of the woods. Others smell his rotting flesh. But the most lucky mm. get a full apparition. You want a, you want a little goat man description? Let me ask you, are you honking or knocking? I'm knocking. I, I think I would too. Right. Okay. And we'll get into why a little bit later on, because if you stay in your car, ugh. Anyway, so people who have seen him describe him as having the body of a man and the head of a goat, its mouth always snarling with huge horns coming from its head. You smell the rotting flesh before you see him, and those who walk across and ha- or have their windows down in the car can hear something that can only be described as somewhere between a growl and a laugh as it approaches you, with its hooves slamming against the bridge. Chills. Yeah, because I feel like that's like most of the time how you hear like Lucifer. Um, I was gonna say identifying himself, but showing himself is in like a goat, like a sinister mm-hmm. looking like goat man thing. So I think that's why Goatman Bridge is like thought of to be so demonic and sinister vibes a lot yeah a lot of people it's not a happy place by any means no just because i think it does relate back to like lucifer like the devil satan himself being a goat form thing right (sighs) now like i said you know a lot of this is conjectured to be folklore right and there's tons of different stories of people seeing different things on this bridge so others have just seen a man who's holding a goat head under each arm know if i vibe with that one because why would he have goat heads he loved his goats right that Others doesn't make sense to me i've just seen ghostly packs of goats running across the bridge that would be my dream little ghost goats perfect as long as they could still chomp the grass i could have as many ghost goats as i want here my stomach is making a lot of noises i apologize <laughs> <laughs> so you know we've definitely we've got the sightings of goat man whether it's his eyes the full body apparition hearing his hooves But he is not the only man who is inhabiting the bridge area in the woods. There's others who claim to have seen his family haunting the woods, still screaming out in pain while they search for Oscar. That's so sad. There's another story of a woman who had lost a child on the bridge, and she spends her time going through the woods and the bridge wailing and looking for her missing child. Um, many people have seen almost like a lady in white type of ghost down on like the, mm. the banks of the creek underneath the bridge. Um, and it's claimed that other ghosts may loam, roam the land as well, coming down from the old Alton Cemetery that is not too far away. So lots, <laughs> lots of stuff happening here. Um, but let's let's kind of get into other than the apparition, what you could expect if you do go visit the Goatman's Bridge. All right. Okay. If you're in your vehicle, and this is where I said I would walk instead of drive, (laughs) some things might start to happen. So your vehicle could shut down and stop moving. The doors may automatically lock and try to keep you in the car. If you go on Halloween, you have a much higher chance of seeing a full body apparition of the goat man, but especially his eyes will be following you wherever Mm. you go. If you go on foot, all the same things. Obviously, you're you know you're not going to get locked in your car on foot, uh, but you can hear the hooves following you across the bridge and through the woods, Ooh, even splashing so down in the creek right below where you stand. So creepy! So so creepy. <laughs> you may hear a woman screaming out in pain, looking for her lost child. You may see glowing balls of light in the woods with giggling, laughing, and growling. My hair is standing up. Like ugh. Then, if you're very lucky, you could be touched or grabbed as you make your way across the bridge by an unseen entity. Or, you know, just have something like rocks lobbed at your head. 
<laughs> it's honestly it, it's really a, a, just a terrifying place um if you guys are more visual than audio people go and check out sam and colby's episode the ghost adventures one is worth watching the buzzfeed one is witty at best um but the thing is is like whether this is all a folk story or not like it is highly, highly documented that some weird things are happening. In yeah. So one thing that Sam and Colby really focused on, right, is so it, it's become a famous spot and tons and tons of people mm-hmm. go here, especially kids. Right. So there's gra- graffiti yeah. all over the bridge. There's a lot of satanic symbols. Um, they find evidence of a lot of even like shrines or altars set up in the woods around it. Well, because you can go under the bridge. Yeah. So under the bridge is just like real creepy because obviously it's like dark under there. You're probably going at night if you're trying to witness something. So it's like dark under there and it's like um, just, you know, like muddy and just graffiti everywhere. Like just think of any under any creepy bridge. Just think (laughs) it's yeah, not it's unsettling. It's it's a very unsettling place. But I, I think right is I always try to look for the explanations of what what may cause this weirdness and you know me and my being obsessed with like intentional haunting right Mm -hmm. i don't think this started off any different than most of the crybaby bridges or correct you know where over years so many people have come to this place and done the ritual and tried to manifest something that could be started now what you have is and whether it's actual satanists right or kids just playing around with the occult you have all these altars and rituals taking place here. Well, and you know people are bringing Ouija boards and shit, so you have all kinds of stuff. All kinds of energy that you're now pouring into this place. So it's totally possible that something actually demonic has been stirred up here. Um, and I think like the actions of people who aren't being responsible with tools of the occult have mm-hmm. probably made this a horribly evil place. In fact, there's a yeah. local pet store nearby had to stop selling cats because they got wind that so many of them were being killed in a ritual mis- or ritualistic Sacrificed. manner around this bridge. Yeah, that's disgusting. So with all of that happening, right, now there's this, like, uh, mediums and stuff have gone to the bridge, and they have found portals, basically, or evidence of what they believe to be portals, where spirits and, you know, even up to demons are coming from the other side. There's that one tree, remember, in the Sam and Colby room oh, focused yep. on it, and it kind of comes up and then it's splits. creepy. It's a very creepy looking tree, but there's they were getting a lot of EMF hits around there. I think they did the Estes method right in front of it too, and got. And you're not supposed to touch the tree, correct? That's it's like the devil's tree or yep. something they call it, and you're not supposed to touch it. And it was giving me anxiety because Sam was doing the Estes method so close, sitting to it that I thought he was going to get scared and jump and touch the tree, and I was like freaking out. Oh my gosh! As much as Sam and Colby, I love them. They can be a little bit over the top. I think they did a really good job in this episode. Some of the things that I mm-hmm. really like is like they go through the folklore, right? So they. Obviously, you can't drive a car across the bridge anymore, but they had the two like headlight lamps. Headlights. And they had the, the air horn to do the honking. <laughs> but, you know, they got a lot of good evidence, especially at night. They captured uh-huh. the screaming in the woods. Was Call Me Chris with yes. them? Yes. Okay. And, yeah. and to me, like that was that was really, really unsettling. It's like ev- actually evidence of the wailing in the woods, which it could have been a human, but they. It yeah it was weird there was times too where they're walking and like the bush started moving or you like you can hear things following them yep um ghost adventures we'll talk a little bit about their investigation um typical baggins he gets possessed on the bridge <laughs> but literally find me an episode of ghost hunters where he doesn't get possessed uh, ghost adventures excuse me uh um, it's just not <laughs> it's just not that serious no the the BuzzFeed episode, that one, that was really a bunch of guys just taunting spirits um, and trying to get demons to do something. And I, I think they really kind of brought a level of disrespect to it. But there was this other investigator and the BuzzFeed guys brought it up. I could not figure out the name of it, but there was a team that went to investigate. And one of the women on the team, the entire time that they're investigating she just keeps getting these images of her killing her entire team on the, mm. the bridge. So, like, 
the entire time they're there, in her brain, that's all she's kind of focused on. So, with all of that being said... That's really creepy. Right? Give give me your thoughts. What what do you think's going on here? Is it demonic? Um, okay. Is it intentional? Is it... No, it's not dem- demonic. Um, I... I think that there's a lot of energy around there, right? There's a graveyard, a whole cemetery, and there's a lot of energy. And I'm sure the times that that they were buried there weren't the greatest of times, right? So you have all that energy that's not necessarily positive. Then you do have, unfortunately, a um, a murder slash annihilating a whole family for no damn reason. Children. I mean, that's just awful in itself. The energy that would come from that would be horrific. So you have, you know negative energy essentially from a cemetery then you have this horrific event that happened that's going to be so much negative energy right and then you have hundreds of thousands of people putting in all their negative energy because you're not going there thinking that you're going to get happy thoughts right you're going there with negative thoughts because that's all you know about this so you're putting in more negative energy in this place so i don't think it's i don't think it's dem- demonic at all i think we just need to leave demons alone uh, I think it's n- negative energy. Now, I do necessarily think, don't necessarily think that it's not haunted, like by a presence of maybe the goat man and other people that have died around there. Like, I don't, but I think that what people are experiencing most is negative energy built up. I think so too. Yeah, that intentional stain. Now, mm-hmm. I think that's probably where it started. Now that you have those kids playing around with the occult and mm-hmm. not knowing what they're doing i mean i do think it's become a very evil sort of place like it it's one of the well it's not good no like i can watch investigations of the haunted asylums and all that kind of stuff for some reason this one really like creeped me out to my core i think because it's like nature nature has so much energy in itself and like outdoors is creepy because you think of a place that you go and you visit like an asylum or a haunted like hotel or hospital that makes sense to you because it is encaged in a room or in rooms or in a building and you can leave. You can leave and go, right? But when you think of something that's being outside and just like in nature and not in an encaged place, it's creepier because it's open and you can't just you, you walk, walk out, out the front of it. Door. Yeah, it's like, what are you going to yeah. do? Go further into the woods here? Right. Um, yeah. So I think that is why those types of places are creepier. I think, too, if we go back to the original history lesson I gave you, right, that Alton was built um, like high on the ridge. And this isn't where the bridge is. Right. But it was built between two creeks. So you had the Pecan Creek and the Hickory Creek. Mm-hmm. And anywhere where you have that natural water flowing, flowing mm-hmm. water, that creates an energy, too, that can almost like True. It almost creates a barrier. Ignites. Around it. Yeah. It, true you have so oh i don't know i i don't know if i could actually stay here so to bring it back full circle to the beginning oh yeah you wouldn't go camping under that i bridge? don't know i don't even know bring if i could for a million dollars with everything that happens there would you if this was the place you had to stay for a million dollars would you stay overnight oh. let me remind you you could have rocks thrown at you a mm-hmm. woman screaming looking for her child the hooves the laughing the rotting flesh. I don't know, because I'm wondering if you're going with a different outlook, if you would experience it all the same. Kara's going in there, selenite in one hand, sage in the <laughs> other. She, you're going to be like the, the Disney princess going to brighten up the whole place. I'm just... But do you know what I mean? Like You're going to be playing Mancala with the goat man. <laughs> right, yeah. Like If I'm just like... What was his name? Uh, Oscar, Oscar Washburn. Yeah, if I'm just like Oscar, man, I'm just like I want to hang out with you and your family. I'm really sorry what what happened. Like I don't know. Be buying up a couple of ghost goats. Uh huh. Yeah, I think like if I could just chill with the goats, chill with Oscar, I think I'd be fine. All right. Hey, I think I, I you think get a million I could do bucks it. at the end of it. Kara's out here going to crack the case of the goat man. I love it. I don't know. See, now I know I said that it's it is creepier because it's like an open air era. It's not an encaged place. But to me, me being like locked in a haunted room or a house sounds scarier than me being under that bridge. As scary as that is, I'm at that place. So opposite of you in that because like I feel like if I'm staying the night in a haunted house, right, I can put myself in a bedroom where I've got 
three walls around me and I can like look at the door. Yeah. Where this like but things see, can I'm, come at you from any yeah. angle. I guess ghosts can go through walls though, so my my theory is kind of right. Funny. No, but I do understand where you're coming from. Just kind of lock yourself in the corner and just like be aware and like you like you have a wall at least. Right. I don't know. I don't know. For some reason, I think that I could. And I'm telling you, this bridge is very creepy under it. But I think that I could. I think I could do it. Great. Well, I've got plane tickets for you to Dallas, Texas. <laughs> I don't have the do million, million dollars, dollars for you, though. No. Start a GoFundMe. <laughs> Let's see what happens. There we go. Come on now. Um, so anyways, yeah, everyone go donate to our GoFundMe to get care to s- no, we're not doing that. Um don't even. All right, but yeah, that's the story of the the Goatman Bridge. It's a really sad it's a sad history lesson. Very sad. It's horrible. And like you said, is it something that really was actually folklore or did this happen in Denton County is just trying to cover up? Ugh. Ugh. There's so many stories like that that are cover ups that we don't know about actual history and like History is so screwed up in itself, and we don't learn about the things that we should learn about and how it really happened. So, yeah, I 100% believe something like that happened. Right. And my little PSA, and then I'm stepping off this, the soapbox. If we don't learn about what really happened in the past, things are destined to repeat themselves. Let's look at the news today. Okay, I'm done. We're off that. Yeah, my stomach is growling. I got to eat. Uh, real quick, though, I have something light to leave you with on this one. Oh, thank because God. Because we were talking about goats. Me and Nick, what, a year, year and a half ago, we went down to Tennessee and we found the happiest place on earth. If you guys haven't oh, yeah. been, what was it called? it's called Goats on the Roof. It's a gift shop, tourist trap or trap gift shop, but they have goats all around outside and on the roof of the building and you can just go pet and love on them. And they have a goat coaster, like an alpine mountain coaster. So if you love goats and ghosts aren't your thing, check out Goats on the Roof and maybe one day in Michigan when me and Nick open our own. But that's yeah, my dream I'm going to work there. Do you want to know what's like really actually creepy? Hmm. So this morning I got an alert that 10 years ago I uploaded a video of my goat when I had one. So I forgot actually, that you had a goat. But that was 10 years ago today. That is very weird. The synchronicity is Isn't that strange? All right. Okay. I need to go eat. My, I'm, you can hear my song. I, I've, I know it. I've heard it all. a couple times. I'll try to cut it out so you all don't have to. Or let them so <laughs> they know what I had to sit and endure. Oh my God, you're fine. See us out, Kara. Well, remember that the references will be in our show notes if you have to, you know. Fact check me. <laughs> you have more curious, yeah, curiosity if you want to fact check us. Um, shout out to Sam and Colby. We love you. Go watch their episode of that. Uh, Twin Paranormal also has one on Goatman's Bridge. Uh, like and subscribe to us. Share with some people. Uh, write in your story. I think you hit all of them. What am I missing? I, th- I think you just need the magic words. Okay. Most importantly, creep it really, eyeballs. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.